Check one, two. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Mike Costello and Amy Dawson and we're here at Lost Creek Farm in Harrison County and today we're going to teach you how to make a classic West Virginia snack, the pepperoni roll. Invented long ago by wives of Italian miners in Marion County, the pepperoni roll is good for any occasion. It's good for the morning with coffee. It's good for the evening with your favorite West Virginia adult beverage, but it's especially appropriate on West Virginia Day. So let's go inside to the kitchen and learn how to make the classic West Virginia pepperoni roll. Sounds good. Okay, we're here. Welcome inside our kitchen here at Lost Creek Farm. And today we're going to walk through uh, one of our favorite recipes for making pepperoni rolls. I'd say there's no um, real right way to make pepperoni rolls. There's a bunch of different riffs on it. I know the first time I ever made a pepperoni roll, I was in about fifth grade. We made them in school with um, that store-bought biscuit dough in a can. And uh, Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, it's not my favorite, but, you know, do what you do. But we, we make a few different versions. This is one that we really like. It's uh, pretty standard, pretty classic for us. It uses our favorite stick pepperoni. Yeah. So that's a thing we'll get into. Sticks versus slices. We're in the stick camp. But again, no right or wrong way to go about doing your pepperoni rolls. So here are all the ingredients that we're going to need to make the dough for the pepperoni rolls. Four cups of all-purpose flour. Two cups of whole milk. Two tablespoons of sugar. Uh, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt and then two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. Perfect. We're gonna start by warming up the milk on the stove top. We don't want it to get too hot. Uh, somewhere between 100 and 110 degrees is pretty good. Uh, when it gets to the temperature range that I want, that's when I'm gonna add my yeast. Again, I use active dry yeast, two and a half teaspoons. And then I use two tablespoons of sugar, and this is really gonna help feed the yeast. So once the yeast and the sugar is in the milk, I'm just going to give it a uh, quick stir. And then we will just kind of let it hang out for about 15 minutes. After only about five minutes, you can just check back in on it. You see that our mix here is already really active. It's uh, very much alive. You can see that it's, uh, it's working. It's pretty bubbly. So this is a pretty good sign that it'll be where we need it to be. Okay, so while the yeast and the milk and the sugar are all hanging out, getting to know each other for a little while, we're going to go ahead and mix up our dry ingredients. That's our flour and our salt. So again, we're using four cups of all-purpose flour. And to get the precise measurement, what I want you to do is to use a, uh, a dry ingredient measuring cup and make sure to flatten it off when you dip down into the flour. You don't want a heaping mound of flour coming over your uh, measuring cup because that's really going to mess up your, your measurements and your ratios. And we want to keep those consistent. Okay, now I'm gonna just put my salt in with the flour in the mixing bowl. Again, that's about one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. So it's been 15 minutes since we put our uh, yeast mixture together with the milk and the sugar. Uh, it's very frothy, very alive, just what we want. I can tell that's gonna be a good rise on our dough. Uh, we're going to put it all together into our stand mixer. Uh, now the attachment you want to use for the stand mixer is this dough hook. And we're going to put it on the lowest setting. Now it's going to take about five or six minutes for this to really get to where you want it to be. Um, so you can just sort of keep an eye on it. Sometimes you're going to need to take a spatula and scrape the side of the bowl if it looks like some of the flour, some of the dough is really sticking and the hook is not taking it off the side. So just kind of keep an eye on it. Okay, so our dough has finished mixing here in the mixer. And 
really if you don't have a stand mixer it's totally fine we make so much bread that we just make by hand with a mixing with a wooden spoon or something um, so I want to show you a little bit about what the dough should look like when it's finished mixing um, so we're looking for something that's pretty soft it's not really that sticky um, What do you think, Baker? It feels good. Mm -hmm. Amy's our made bread baker here at Lost Creek Farm, so if she says it's good, then I feel pretty good about it. For the dough to rise, I'm going to put it back into a clean mixing bowl that I've oiled. So I put a little bit of olive oil in and just sort of wipe it with a paper towel. This will allow it to rise without it sticking to the side of the bowl. So as we set the dough to rise in this mixing bowl, I want to make sure to cover it up to keep it from drying out. I could use some kind of plastic wrap, even aluminum foil, but in this case, I don't really want to throw anything away if I don't have to. So I'm going to use this pot lid that fits perfectly. You can also use a dinner plate, something like that. So we've got our dough rising in the mixing bowl. It's going to take probably about an hour and a half or so, uh, maybe two hours to get it to uh, double in size. So we're going to do a few things to prep the rest of our pepperoni rolls while we're waiting. And now it's time to cut the pepperoni. So as we mentioned before, we have a strong preference for stick pepperoni over the slices. If you wanted to use slices, that's totally fine, but uh, we really like the sticks. One thing though, just keep in mind if you're using the sticks, a lot of the stick pepperoni has this collagen casing on the outside that's uh, very, very tough. And um, you should go ahead and remove that before you uh, prep the pepperoni to put in the dough. And we use sticks that are a little bit on the thicker side. So what we're just going to do, once we've cut the pieces to length, we're just going to cut that stick in half long ways. And then from each half, we can get about four, maybe five smaller sticks. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half. And the dough just looks perfect. It's more than doubled in size. It's really light. It's airy. It's so much lighter than it was before. So to really achieve that kind of uh, chewy, glutinous, bready texture that I want, we're going to press it down and we're going to let it rise again for uh, about another hour. A secondary rise isn't 100% necessary. It's just going to give a little bit more of the texture that we want. Um, it's not necessary, I say, because you're going to give the dough another chance to rise again. Um, because what we're going to do now is we're going to portion it out, and then after we portion, we're going to let it rest uh, for a few more minutes. So um, to portion it, just think about how many rolls you want. So for this batch, I'm going to try to make eight larger rolls. You can make a dozen uh, sort of small to medium size rolls out of this batch, but uh, we're going to make ours in the bigger side. So I start with a floured work surface. And then I'm just going to work to uh, sort of divide this up into equal portions. So I'm going to start with four equal portions. You can weigh these out if you want to make sure they're consistent, but I'd like to just eyeball it. And then from there, I'm going to make uh, two smaller portions out of our quarters. When the portions of dough are the exact size that we want, we're going to rest them again. This time, it's going to be about 15 minutes. So this 15 minutes, it's a really good time to clean up the kitchen a little bit, clean up our mess, and to preheat our oven to 350 degrees. When we're ready to stuff the pepperoni rolls, we're just going to kind of take the dough and flatten them out. You can kind of think of this step as uh, making like a, a miniature pizza dough, for instance. You just want to kind of uh, turn it in your hand. It's going to be uh, circular, but we want to be able to flatten it out so that um, there's not too much dough between each of the sticks of pepperoni. It can be pretty thin, um, but I also wouldn't make it too, too thin. I mean, probably about a quarter of an inch or so is a good place to, good place to start. So now it's time to do the stuffing. We're going to put the pepperoni into the dough and assemble our pepperoni rolls. So we're going to shoot for about three, maybe four of these larger sticks. You could do a lot more if you cut the sticks smaller, uh, but for us, uh, three would be a good number since they're pretty thick. So I just put it in one side, roll it over, put another stick in, roll that over, and then looks like we'll be able to do three with these. 
So I roll that all up and I'll kind of pinch over the ends, uh, pinch the bottom and just put them over here on my tray, ready to go. The tray could be oiled. Um, I just put a little bit of parchment paper on the tray. Now, if I'm making pepperoni rolls with the slices, if, you, if that's the way that you're choosing it to do it at home, um, usually just put maybe like four or five slices uh, in a row and then fold it over and then do another four or five slices and then wrap the pepperoni roll up like that. Now I like to fold over the edges and just make a concealed pepperoni roll. I know some people who do not do that and they just sort of have these open-ended pepperoni rolls. Um, for me, it's uh, a couple of things. I mean, if you go anywhere in West Virginia, you buy pepperoni rolls, odds are it's going to be totally concealed. Uh, the ends are going to be pinched over. But also there's a very practical reason, and that is that um, you want the bread to be able to soak up all of the pepperoni grease. So if the ends are open, sometimes that grease just sort of like leaks out uh, all over your baking sheet. But you want to be able to keep that. Um, because the best part of the pepperoni roll uh, is like the bread on the bottom and on the sides that has soaked up all of that nice grease from the pepperoni itself. So our rolls are stuffed with pepperoni. They've rested for a few minutes and they're almost ready to go into the oven. But there's just one more step and that's to lightly brush the tops with a little bit of melted salted butter. This is going to add a little bit of flavor and it's also just going to help with the browning process while they're baking. The rolls are in the oven, so now comes the hardest part of this whole recipe, the waiting. We've set a timer for 25 minutes, and we'll see you again soon. Well, that was terrible, but after 25 long minutes, we now have some beautiful golden brown pepperoni rolls. They smell delicious. They're orange on the sides and the bottoms. They're nice and soft, but they're also really hot. So I'm gonna put them on this rack to cool. So that's it. Good luck at home making your pepperoni rolls. Happy West Virginia Day. Happy West Virginia Day. From us here at Lost Creek Farm. Cheers. Not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, so our dough is rising. It's going to take... What? I'm sorry. Why are you gesturing with the pepperoni? I'm not gesturing with the pepperoni. You can't even see it. Okay. I'm sorry. And go. So we've got our dough rising.